This week I ate what my Garmin thought were my maintenance calories just to see if it worked. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week I ate what my Garmin thought were my maintenance calories because I wanted to see does it actually work? Is it an accurate reflection of how many calories you burn in a day? I have a Garmin Vivo Active 3 and I've had it for well over a year now. Um, this isn't a tech review, but generally speaking, I really like it. Um, I've since bought two more for my husband and my sister-in-law, and also my best friend has recently bought one. So clearly we're all on the Garmin train. So using your Garmin and MyFitnessPal, because they are apps that link together, um, you can use it to estimate how many calories it thinks you've burnt in a day. And obviously you can use that to uh, try and lose weight, to try and gain weight, or to try and maintain your weight. And that's exactly what I did. I went on to MyFitnessPal, uh, which I already had an account for. I've used it on and off for the last couple of years. And I adjusted my goals to maintain my weight. And I thought, because I'm only doing this for a week, it, I didn't think that was really long enough to see if the weight loss or weight gain options were going to be good enough. Um, you can't really tell weight fluctuations over a week whether or not that's that accurate. So I thought, well, I'm pretty good at maintaining my weight generally, so I would set it to maintain. I weighed myself every single day of that week and I try to eat as close to the number of calories that my fitness pal said as I possibly could. As far as I can work out, all my fitness pal does is a very basic um, base metabolic rate calculation. So it looks at how much, how much you currently weigh, your activity levels, your height, your gender, your age, and using all of those factors, it tries to establish um, how many calories it thinks you will burn in a day without doing any activity at all. Now there is a distinction between your kind of base activity levels and any exercise you do on top of that. And because I have a desk job, my base activity levels are incredibly low. There are a lot of pitfalls with the BMR calculations, one of the main ones being that they don't take account for muscle mass at all. I'm sure there's plenty of videos on YouTube about the pros and cons of the BMR calculation. So you can go and watch some of those if you're more interested. I'm not really going to go into any more detail than that. Once you have your goals set up in your MyFitnessPal account, that will give you an estimation of how many calories it thinks you need to eat in a day to achieve your goal. For me to maintain my weight, this ended up being about 2,100 calories. Your Garmin and the Garmin Connect app will then try and estimate based on your level of activity how many additional calories it thinks you've burnt of a given day. Now it mainly does this by tracking your steps for the day but it'll also add in any additional calories burned through any exercise activities that you've recorded. Generally speaking I am pretty good at maintaining my weight without too much outside interference. So much so that I really struggle to try and lose weight and I don't put weight on very easily either. My hypothesis at the start of the week is that I thought I probably would maintain my weight or if anything, to be honest, I thought I would put on a little bit of weight. For seven days, that is exactly what I did. Monday to Sunday, I entered every single thing that I ate. So it is... 10 to 7 on Monday morning and I am about to show you what I am having for breakfast um, but first we need to look at how many calories I've got for the day this will stay the same throughout the week because I won't have done any exercise first thing in the morning um, but that will change throughout the day so I will keep checking back in and we'll see how we get on I really tried hard to be as accurate as I could, even putting in cups of tea and coffee, all the oil that I used to cook. I specifically picked a week where my activity levels were going to be pretty low. Uh, this was the week after I just finished my 10 week uh, 
home workout program from Natasha Roshian. So I filmed this the same week as I filmed my last video, which was doing seven days of yoga. I thought if I kept my activity levels low for the week, then my Garmin and my fitness pal would just be able to do a better job of estimating the calories that I needed. So the only real activities I did for the week were my half an hour of yoga every day or um, small amounts of walking. I did try and eat as normally as possible for the week, so I didn't follow any of the specific macro splits. But obviously when I got to the end of the day and I was getting near to my calorie limit, I did stop so there was a small element of restriction but I'm a big girl and I eat a lot of food and to maintain my weight it does take a decent amount of calories so um, there wasn't really a huge amount of restriction involved in this week for me. I usually slightly under it every single day and that's because it's quite hard to eat like exactly the right number of calories like how are you going to sit there and work out you know what percentage of this square of chocolate is going to give me 65 calories just so you get an example of what I ate on a particular day I'll pop up a screen recording now of my calories on a specific day on this particular day I had a pretty big bowl of overnight oats for breakfast racking me up about 700 calories and then for lunch, I had some pesto pasta, absolute staple, with nutritional yeast and an apple. Oh, and it looks like I had some cherries that day as well. And then for dinner, I made a stir fry that had some oomph pieces in it, some basmati rice, sriracha mayo, mushrooms, bean sprouts. I mean, this is a prime example of a day when I probably had more veg in that stir fry than I specifically put on there. But I mean, who's got time to weigh carrots? And then for snacks, I had some rice cakes and biscuits and that milk is probably from a cup of tea that I had. But again, I, I didn't really record every single cup of tea because it's like two calories. For the whole week, this is how close to the number of calories I got. So as I said at the start of the video as well, I weighed myself every single morning and here is what happened to my weight. So I actually lost a little bit of weight, which I really wasn't expecting. And as I said, I was actually slightly under eating each day, but I didn't really think this was going to be enough for me to see any noticeable difference in my weight. And also, as I said, my activity levels were actually quite low for the week, like low, low for my normal week. So that really was a bit of a surprise to me. Obviously, I only did this over a week and there's so many different hormonal fluctuations that can happen in a week that you really can't put too much emphasis on this and say, yes it definitely works as i mentioned at the start of the video i think this is possibly to do with the muscle mass question and because the bmr calculations don't take into account your muscle mass at all this is maybe why i was potentially slightly under eating in order to maintain my weight you know i am a big girl so i do need a lot of food but also have been weight training pretty consistently now well covid19 aside but I was weight training pretty consistently for about nine months up until that point. So I have got some muscle mass, it's all mainly in my legs. I'm not an expert though. So if anybody else has got any theories, then please let me know. It would be really interesting to see if I repeated this on a week where my activity levels were quite high, whether that would change anything. Because A, I'm not sure how accurate the calorie estimation within the activities are, but also how much that, that would skew the results. Because, you know, on a high activity day, you could be burning five, six, seven hundred calories. Well, that's quite a lot more food to be eating on top of my 2100 calories that I need just for me to exist. Maybe when I can get back into a gym again, I'll put that on the list for a future video. Based on my experience, you could say that the Garmin and my Fitness Pal estimations are actually a pretty reasonable guess. I haven't tried this from a weight loss perspective because, to be honest, calorie tracking is incredibly tedious and doing it for any longer than a week, you know, to, to that level of accuracy is just so time consuming that I'm not sure it's really worth it. But if you're looking for a starting point as to how many calories you think you probably need in a day, especially if you're looking to put on weight or if you've recently changed your diet in any drastic way, I think it's probably a really good starting point. And like I said, tracking your calories every single day for every meal gets really tedious after a while, so I'm not sure if you could really maintain it for much longer than a week. 
Well, I couldn't anyway. I couldn't wait for the following Monday to not have to do it anymore. So that's all I have for today. So let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions or any theories as to why I might have lost weight this week. I've got another food challenge related video coming for you next week. So have a lovely rest of your week and I will see you soon. There are a lot of piss, piss falls.